Gobble, gobble, fellow residents in the nation of Nindy, and thanks for tuning in to another week of the Nindy Nation podcast. I'm Jeff, and we've been getting a bunch of new traffic across all of the Nindy Nation channels over the past week, so if this is your first time listening to the show, welcome, and thanks for taking the time out of your busy week to spend it with us. If you can't tell by my turkey pun, I'm not sure if we'll have an episode next week, so just in case, I'm going to make sure to get all the puns out of my system today. The Nindy Nation podcast is your weekly dive into all things independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. And just like a Thanksgiving spread, we're here to serve up all of this week's new releases. And once you've had more than you can handle, it's time to loosen that belt because we're breaking out the weekly deals to make sure everyone gets a taste of a Nindy they'll love. New episodes typically publish to podcast feeds on Saturdays, and the following Monday you can check it out on YouTube, accompanied by game trailers and footage of all of the Nindies discussed. While you're there, go check out this week's new Let's Plays for Monkey Barrels and Biolab Wars. I told you last week I was going to check out Biolab Wars after I impulse bought it during the show, and I found a short and simple but really fun game that I think you should check out if you're a fan of classic titles like Contra. But if your plate is full of indie games, may I interest you in a spread of everything else Nintendo? If so, go check out our hosts at thenintendovillage.com and check out their daily updates, podcasts, and YouTube shows focused on all things Nintendo. Before we get into the new releases, let's take a quick look at the unannounced games that released last week. I promise this will be quick as there were only two games that missed the marketing deadline and they both look, well... Let's just say it'll hopefully only get better from here. Here are last week's Nindy leftovers. True Fear The Forsaken Souls Part 2, released by Digital Lounge for 10 bucks, and is a spooky escape room game and claims that the original was one of the highest rated spooky escape room games. And now I know that there's a genre of spooky escape room games, because this is probably only the second or third spooky escape room game I've ever heard of, and I've now hit my quota of saying spooky escape room game. And for an absolutely laughable $39.99, the incredible minds at Big Ben Interactive, one of the newer shovelware publishers who have recently learned how much money they can suck out of people on the Switch, have brought us their latest masterpiece, you ready for it? The Unicorn Princess, and it is literally just an open field where you play as a girl riding a horse that has a horn attached to her head. It's $39.99. See? Told you there was nothing to be thankful for in that section. I hope you're still hungry, though, because now, my friends, now it is time to dig in to the main course. Here are this week's new releases. Starting on November 22nd, launching on sale for $4.99 is Castle of No Escape 2 by Cubic Games. Set across 216 randomly generated rooms in the titular castle, you'll play through this 8-bit throwback to classic top-down dungeon crawlers as one of the multiple playable characters to see if you can escape the castle of no escape. And also from Cubic Games, developed by (laughs) Noobs from Poland, is the also hilariously titled Monster Bugs Eat People for two bucks. Playing as the monster bug, you will steer your worm-like creature across the city, eating people to become bigger while watching out for things that are bigger than you. Marbleless Animals by BLG Publishing rolls its way to the eShop for a slightly too high $4.99, bringing with it 40 levels where you will rotate your switch to move little marble-shaped animals around, collecting coins and making your way to the hole without falling off the platform. You know, like those couple of shrines in Breath of the Wild, but 40 of them for 5 bucks. That seems steep. And if you're looking for more overpriced mobile ports, well, BoomBit Games has you covered with their $12 2D fighter, Tiny Gladiators. The game itself doesn't look too bad, although it definitely has that static 2D artwork that so many of these mobile ports try to pass off as animation. While it is a traditional 2D fighter, it adds an RPG and gear loop that I bet I could get sucked into. BoomBit already has at least four of these titles on mobile platforms for free, so I see no reason to check it out on the Switch, especially for 12 bucks. 
And before we move on to November 26th, you know, unfortunately, as I'm going through all of these new releases, picking out what we're going to talk about, usually we have some really great games every single week. And especially the last two or three episodes, it was pretty easy to spend $60 a week on top-notch nindies. But I don't know. Maybe it's just because we're at the week of Thanksgiving. These games are just bad. I mean, I shouldn't paint with such a broad stroke, especially covering only indie titles, but let's pick things up a little bit with a title that looks pretty cool, shall we? Here's a promising title coming by way of Congregate, which I think was the name of GameStop's publishing arm for a while, or like their digital storefront. Developed by Twirlbound, Pine is a cool take on the open world survival genre in a world where humans never reached the top of the food chain. Pine has a very colorful and welcoming art style and a deep system which allows you to interact with the wildlife in the game. You could befriend and fight alongside them or hunt them for loot to craft new equipment, for example. Pine looks to pack a huge game into its $25 asking price. And bringing some multiplayer puzzle action, complete with scantily clad anime girls this week, is Chameleon by a new Nindy developer, Joyful Star Inc. The description they provide is pretty worthless, but the game looks kind of like a crossover between Chinese checkers and Hexic. It doesn't look very good, and the anime girls seem to have no purpose as they are just shamelessly scattered about, but if you want to blow $5 on November 26th, this is a great way to do it. And we've got a few games releasing the next day on November 27th if you need a Nindy appetizer before the main course. Starting with Real Heroes Firefighter, which is a port from the Wii originally developed by Golem Entertainment and features a surprisingly strong cast of voice actors coming from TV shows like Buffy, Rescue Me, and The Shield. Playing in a first-person perspective, you'll tackle nine different missions that each have you axing down doors, rescuing people from burning buildings, and of course, putting out the fires. Even with the Switch's updated graphics, Real Heroes Firefighter looks pretty dated. I think it looks fun though, and during launch week, it's down from the MSRP of $15 to only 5 bucks, so it might be worth checking out. It's different, that's for sure. And marking their eShop debut, developer Brain Seal Entertainment brings us Story of a Gladiator for $10.99. At first glance, it looks like a pretty low-budget game with cheap visuals, but the more I read into it, Story of a Gladiator looks like it could be a fun little arcade brawler. As the name suggests, you play as a gladiator fighting in the Colosseum working your way through all kinds of arena battles while upgrading your character, recruiting team members, and learning all kinds of new abilities and moves. I can't imagine that Story of a Gladiator is going to make it on anybody's Game of the Year lists, but I'm adding it to my wish list because when it eventually goes on sale for 5 bucks or less, it could be an amusing time waster. Something to play in the background while you're catching up on Netflix. Another developer bringing their first game to the Switch is Game Popper, who delivers a simple twin-stick shooter similar to Geometry Wars with Gemstone Keeper. Using ASCII art, you'll explore a deep system of caverns, battling waves of enemies while searching for the 150 gemstones hidden throughout the world. And Gemstone Keeper can be yours for $8.99. Starring a wrench-wielding ferret named Sprocket... It's a sentence I didn't think I would say this week. This $12 debut title from Noble Robot is called Widget Satchel, and for good reason. In Widget Satchel, you'll puzzle platform your way across the world collecting sprockets, with the catch being that the more sprockets you collect, the heavier your satchel becomes, which then changes how you must approach the various platforming puzzles throughout the game. I think it looks pretty neat. And rounding out the new releases for this week, here's a few nindies to place on your Thanksgiving table, and maybe treat yourself to one after eating all the turkey you can muster up, but before taking the beloved Thanksgiving afternoon nap. Ugh, I'm already looking forward to that. Family Tennis SP could in fact be the perfect post-Thanksgiving meal title to play, as it's a cute and simple tennis game that adopts many of the elements you'd see in a Mario tennis game. Arc System Works is a pretty solid publisher on the eShop, and Family Tennis SP packs in some wacky power-ups alongside a charming anime art style with multiple modes to keep you busy. If you're looking for a cheap tennis game to play with your family this Thanksgiving break, Family Tennis SP seems like just the ticket. 
After passing an age verification screen, I was greeted with a $25 price tag and a brooding image of an anime pretty boy, and I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. And then I saw the title, Kissed by the Baddest Bidder. In this game, apparently you are a young girl who somehow ends up as an item in a black market auction, waiting to be bid on by powerful anime men such as the cold-hearted CEO, the womanizing thief, or the cool mobster. As the game says, and I quote, and now you're completely at their mercy. That's right, this is a indie visual novel sex slave simulator. And frankly, I don't even know what I'm more surprised by. The fact that publisher Voltage thinks this is even a remotely good idea, or that they do so because they believe there's a market there for it. Oh, and it releases on Thanksgiving Day. Gross. Now in an effort to cleanse my palate, let's just go about as far away from that theme as possible. Do you remember Nyan Cat or Nyan Cat or someone's going to correct me on that pronunciation? You know, the square-shaped pixel cat looks like it's <laughs> looks like it's made out of a pop tart and it has a rainbow shooting out of its butt and it flies through space singing its little song like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let's keep that going. Well, he's got a game now. Nyan Cat Lost in Space is a runner platformer where you jump over pits, collect all of the candy and space power-ups you can, and be charmed by the cheery and cracked out rainbow colors all while avoiding evil cosmic horrors such as space dogs. I have a feeling that if you're in the market for a Nyan Cat space runner, it probably doesn't matter who published it or how much it costs, but just in case. Is Tom Games made this title, and it is free to play on mobile, so you're probably crazy for spending nine bucks on this game for the Switch, but I'd rather you be the quote, buy the Nyan Cat game that's free to play on mobile crazy much more than the, you know, kissed by the baddest bidder type of crazy. And finally, the last title of the week and the last new release on your Thanksgiving day is Knowledge Trainer Trivia for $14.99 by The Binary Family, whatever that means. This game positions itself as some kind of brain trainer, but it's really just a basic multiple choice trivia game with all kinds of generic I think it said 4,000 trivia questions, so I'm not thankful for that game. But you know what I am thankful for? That's right, eShop deals. And I think we might do a quick Black Friday podcast next week if time permits. So here are the games that I think at this price probably won't be lower on Black Friday and are at least active until the Wednesday before. Of 244 total games on sale right now and 107 of them new this week, Here are this week's eShop deals. Rocket League, the super-powered robot car soccer game that took the world by storm, is still going strong and is currently 50% off for only 10 bucks. And this is a great game to play over Thanksgiving if you have never tried it out before. Galax Z, the Void Deluxe, is a really fun twin stick shooter with a cool anime art style that is a little bit more like mech oriented. And the game also includes their Void expansion DLC. Now don't get this confused with the Galax Z game on the Switch that's free to play. This is a $15, $20 value that is currently on sale 75% off for $3.74. And it definitely comes Nindy Nation recommended. And if you followed me on Twitter, you saw that I posted Monospark is currently 90% off for 99 cents. It's usually 10 bucks. It's been down to this price a couple of times in the past, but it's a fun roguelike with a lot of cool magic and enchanted forest elements about rebuilding your town after it was destroyed. And I really enjoy my time with Monospark every time I get to play it. Thumper, the rhythm game that's like evil, cursed, dark metal music is 75% off for $4.99. And while it is something majorly intense, if you've got a good pair of headphones, this is a great way to just sink into something that will completely mesmerize you. 
Cave Blazers is a fairly recent retro side-scrolling dungeon crawler that released a few months ago and is currently 75% off for $3.74. And if you're looking for a truly unique six to eight hour campaign that dives into some incredible visuals and really does what it can to trick you into thinking you're, you know, kind of going a little crazy, you can check out Hellblade, which is $15 right now or 50% off. Now it was developed and published by an indie studio, but that studio has now been acquired by Microsoft, but I'm gonna count it for the purpose of these sales in this podcast. I think I mentioned it last week, but Laser Kitty Pal Pal is still 29 cents, and I think this one would be a pretty fun game to show if you have smaller kids over for Thanksgiving, or if you just want to say, look at this crazy video game to anybody that will listen. I mean, it's ridiculous, and it's only 29 cents, so why not? There's a Let's Play Nindies of it on our YouTube channel as well. And finally, probably the perfect game for your Thanksgiving holiday, Tumblestone is only $2.99, which is 80% off. Tumblestone is a Tetris-like puzzle game that's a little bit of Tetris, a little bit of Puyo Puyo, a little bit of, I don't know, Bust a Move or Bejeweled, but it's really fun and that game shines when it is in multiplayer. Plus, it has multiplayer for up to eight people and I think up to four people just in tabletop mode. And that's it for this week's sales, but we'll talk pretty soon as the massive deals for next week are already starting to come in. And as always, in the meantime, follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation to be kept up to date on any deals we think are too good for you to pass up. Yeah, kind of a bummer week in terms of new releases, but that's okay because we've had three incredible weeks in a row. I don't know what you've been picking up, but I am drowning in roguelike goodness between Monospark, Children of Morta, and Black Future 88. By the way, I am currently loving Children of Morta, and I think it will be my Nindy of the year, maybe my game of the year, and cannot recommend it highly enough. Next week, I'm sure we'll have great deals, and this is typically the time of year when new releases start to slow down. So what are you playing? What are you picking up right now? Don't be a stranger on social media, as we're also on Facebook, or you can always comment on the YouTube videos. In fact, there's a lot going on over at the Nindy Nation YouTube channel right now. Two brand new Let's Play videos, one for Good Feels Monkey Barrels, a wonderful little twin stick shooter with a perfect level of difficulty, and Biolab Wars, the Contra throwback published by Forever Entertainment. Two great games that earn the Nindy Nation seal of approval. Watch the channel in the coming week for this month's We Love Nindies, featuring the games that are currently keeping our Joy-Cons synced. And as always, you can find the video version of this podcast episode just a couple of days after the audio version hits the podcast feeds. And if your plate is full of Nindies, don't forget you can always head over to the Nintendo Village where the rest of the village is plugging away at daily feature articles, previews and reviews of all the newest games, and weekly shows dedicated to gaming across the Nintendo spectrum. Thanks for joining this week. You all know how thankful I am for you, right? I say it every week, but thank you very much. I've got some very exciting news to share soon, but I'm waiting for some final preparations. Might not have a show next week, or perhaps maybe a quick audio-only deals-focused show, so stay tuned to the Nindy Nation Twitter feed for more details. Until then, while there isn't a ton worth checking out in the new releases, we've had plenty of games just these last couple of weeks, and there's some great options for you in the sales this week to make sure you're getting enough to keep your Joy-Cons synced.